I mean, I see all these poses where they're, I keep seeing all these poses that they're doing and all the little funny. Hey guys, are you seeing these poses in there? Do you like, do you like what I'm doing? And all of this when they hit a shot, guys, are you, I'm not getting anything, guys, are you, I, I guess I'll just start the show without a pose. So let's bring in our blueprint. We're gonna start off with the build it segment. Yeah, we're gonna go with wine and some bottle opener stuff to help your game in the build it segment. After that, it's a PSA, a putting service announcement. We're gonna help your putting. In the middle of the show, I've got a great guest coming. You're not gonna to wanna to miss one of the longtime players on the PGA Tour. And in the bottom segment of the show, we've got Matrix Mental Game. And as always, we close with Time to Rise. Are you ready? Because it's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. And I'm gonna pose my way out of this and just kind of mic drop and just. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. It's time to get after it. It's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. Yeah, we're gonna build you a better game. And we're gonna get a little boozy to do that today. Hope you don't mind if we get a little bit, you know, wine involved or drink involved to help your game. What is this thing? I bet you've got one of these laying around gathering dust in your garage. It's an old wooden wine rack. Yeah, one of those wine racks that just kind of goes like that and expands. Well, how can we use this to help your full swing and your putting? Let's talk putting first. So I'm gonna open it up real wide like that and put it down. So if I put it down right there and grab my putter and grab a ball, I've got these little openings in the bottom right here. I can get a club length away and I can work on my three footers right here with that thing wide open and just roll it right through, boom. But that's pretty easy, isn't it? How can I make it harder? Oh, what can I do when I can do that every time? Make the wine rack a little narrower. So stand the wine rack up, make it narrower so it stays right there. Now I've made a narrower opening from three feet. Now can I pop it right through that opening right there at three feet and roll it right through? Oh, I dinged it off the edge. So keep narrowing it. Make it a little narrower and taller next time right there. Now I've got a really small target to get it through. So the wine rack will help you dial in your putting stroke and hopefully right through there. I hit it both times, I gotta work on my putting. Now, how can this help your full swing? We're gonna come back to that in a minute because I got one more piece of bar equipment to help your putting before we put the putter up. Let's go to our low angle view over here. Check this out. So over here at the low angle view, this is a, a, a wine opener right here. So it's a, you, take, you take your cork out with it. So it's got these little legs on the side of it right here. Okay, these little legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna point these legs right at the ball. So right at the ball right there. Once again, I've made another little narrow opening. So when you can't get to the golf course and you're trying to figure out what you can use to putt with, you can try to putt it between the legs of the wine cork opener, just like that, boom. I hit it right between them. Watch again. I've got a little narrow opening. I'm three feet away and I'm just trying to knock it right between those two legs, boom. Now come back to the big view. So we've got the wine rack that you can keep narrowing. So you widen it out, get good at wide, and then narrow it in and get good at narrow. Then we got the bottle opener. Now we're gonna widen this out again to help your full swing. If you're an over the top player, meaning you swing back and your loop goes this way, you're gonna use the openings here in the wine rack to help you not do that. So you're gonna set up right here. So this bar is my line right between my feet and my target line. And I'm gonna go back and put the club right through that opening right there, go to the top of my swing and then try to bring it back down through this opening. So through that opening, a little lay down of the club, little small loop, come through that opening back to the ball. Do this at home, you'll get a feel for a better path. So instead of your path being in this one and over that one, we wanna come back here, drop the club there and come through that opening and see if that doesn't help you build a better full swing. So wine rack, putting and full swing, get your wine opener to help your putting. And these things around your house can help you build a better game. Okay, Golf King of Viewers, it's our putting service announcement. Yes, a PSA to help probably the weakest part of your game, which is putting. And we've got a 30 foot downhill putt on a very fast green. So my question is, 
how are you on these downhill speedy ones? Because there's one thing that this putt needs and it's time and you have to be able to see time. What happens is I'll watch a player on these fast putts and they're looking like this. So when they're looking at the hole and checking their line, their head's moving real fast and their eyes are moving real fast. So what does that mean to how you'll hit the putt? If I'm looking at this and my eyes are looking fast at the hole, well, that's the speed. I'm going to see the ball roll and I'll hit the putt and it'll do something like that and go a million miles an hour. And that's across the green. That's on the cart path. That's crossing the cart path heading for the drain. Oh, it went in the drain. Great, there's a golf ball I won't get back. But maybe that's what happens when you're putting. You don't drain the putt, you hit it in the drain because you hit it too hard. Let's talk about time, and we're gonna put a stopwatch on the screen. So watch this, 30 feet, downhill, fast green. We're gonna throw a stopwatch on this. So from the moment I hit it, we're gonna time it to go down there 30 feet. I got a leaf in my way, I gotta get it out of there. But while I'm doing that, I want you to think about how much time will this take to get down there? How much time? Three seconds, four seconds, 12 seconds. We're gonna put a timer up. So here's the timer. I'm gonna to try to hit it at the right speed and get it to go down there. Let's see how long this takes to roll. So I've hit it, now I'm just watching it. I'm a spectator, it's rolling down there. Hey, I like the line. Come left a little. Holy smokes, I almost made it, but there, it just stopped. There's our timer. Look at how long that took. Did you have that number in mind? That took a long time to roll 30 feet down this hill. So in your brain, put in your mind, this putt is gonna take a long time to roll and make the ball roll to the time. If it's gonna take 10 seconds in your mind, hit a 10 second long putt. If it's gonna take 12, five, whatever it is, putt to that time and see if you don't deal with these speedy downhillers a little better. Here's one thing I hear from a lot of players that they want. And it's a swing tip. It's a quick, simple swing tip. I've got one that'll help a lot of players out there. I want you to watch your video and I want you to check the finish of your swing and see if this is a problem, okay? Here's the problem. When you swing through, I want you to notice, do you fillet your hands apart in the finish? See how my hands are apart? I see a lot of players that finish and their hands fillet apart right there. Then. Do you swing through and hit yourself with the club coming through? If you hit yourself with the club in your finish or your hands fillet apart, what are you doing? You're breaking your golf swing. Now, players will say to me, well, the finish, I've already hit the ball, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does, because it's time. I'm the only coach I hear talking about time. In order for you to fillet your hands or hit yourself, you've had to start that process somewhere back, either at impact or before it. If I get you to not fillet your hands and keep your hands together, you know what happens? The club face calms down. If you don't hit yourself, usually you don't collapse at impact with your arms and hit yourself, and your tempo slows down and your impact cleans up. So check yourself and see if you're filleting your hands or hitting yourself. And if you are, keep your hands together and don't overbend your arms and your finish and see if those shots get better. Now stay tuned. We'll be right back for more here in the Golf Kingdom. Welcome back to the Golf Kingdom, and I've got a super treat for you. Some golfers are just golfers. Other golfers are true sportsmen. And this guy behind me, Jay Williamson, is a sportsman who happened to play the PJ Tour. Over 175 cuts made on tour. The guy was out there a long time, storied career. He had 
you know, a career that a lot of us would have loved to have had out there. Some great experiences. Jay, welcome to the Golf Kingdom. Great to have you. Thank you, Rob. It's great to see you. Gotcha. I've got a quick question for you. So you didn't grow up a golf guy. You grew up a hockey guy, went to Trinity College, where you were just a super hockey player who happened to transition to golf. What was your best hockey moment at Trinity? Oh, gosh, Rob, you're asking something that happened 30 years ago. I don't know if I remember anymore. Um, I think just playing playing with a, with a bunch of guys all kind of going after the same thing. I think the experience of being in a locker room with, with 20 other guys uh, was something I'll never forget. And we won a couple championships and uh, I really enjoyed uh, enjoy the experience. And actually, it probably helped me in my golf career more than I would uh, actually recognize. And, and how would it have helped you in your golf career? That was my next question. You led me right to it. What's a way that hockey, one way that you use that in your golf career? Um, well, number one, we had some success. So I, you know, success breeds success in, in other endeavors. Um, I think just uh, may, maybe the, the diligence that, that playing college athletics um, requires, um, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing. I didn't realize probably, and, you know, I, I didn't realize the commitment that, that playing college athletics at any level takes, which, you know, kind of aligns itself with the diligence that you have to try to make it as a professional golfer. That's awesome. Yeah. You've, you've got to have that work ethic and hockey, you know, one of the greatest sports ever, you know, it definitely trains you to do that. Um, Interesting question. One time you told me that you figured out how to hit a long iron. And I always thought that was interesting. And I never thought to ask you, what did you figure out? Because that's the hardest club in the well, game back again. You know what? I probably figured out to listen to you more. Um, <laughs> and, and you, you know, <laughs> that's one of the things I probably would have won a few more times and, uh, and made more cuts if I would have listened to you. I was pretty stubborn. Um, you know, being an athlete, um, I tried to play golf athletically. Um, and I, it, you know, for some reason I was always, I always had the ability to, uh, uh, you know, to hit the ball pretty solid. Um, I think it was the more intricate, uh, part of the game that, that eluded me. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I always felt like I, I could hit the ball solidly and hitting, hitting long irons was something that I was actually pretty good at you know other than you know making three footers uh you know i could actually hit a three iron well, it was interesting you mentioned making three footers and you told me one time if you had my putting stroke you would have won a bunch on tour and what's interesting to our viewers out there is jay's a right-handed player putting left-handed when you made the switch over to left-handed what did you find initially that that was the key thing that helped in your putting um, I think, well, you know, I go back and forth with lefty, although I've, I've probably robbed, as, as you know, I've, I've tried every, every way to putt. Um, when I putt left-handed, um, I will actually played hockey left-handed. Um, but I think putting left-handed for me, I, all I was doing was trying to do, use my right, uh, my right hand, my right arm to, uh, to make the stroke. Um, and there's a lesson there, I think, uh, a deeper lesson. But, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I didn't yip putts uh, from the left side, and uh, and I did from the right. Um, although I think I've kind of figured that out. But it's just – it's it's such an easy thing, um, you know, to figure out. I just – I have way too much face rotation with my putter. And I think my shoulders work incorrectly. They work around instead of up and down. And, uh, you know, that it just took me 56 years to, to really figure that out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> just, just 56 years. That's, that's what golf is. Just 56 is. years. It right. gives everybody eternal hope that they can keep right. going. And hopefully it just takes a few, year, few yes, less years to figure it out. Now, on and listen to your instructor. You know, when, when your instructor has a good putting stroke, you should probably listen to it. <laughs> well, well thanks, thanks for that. I appreciate that. And, you know, on tour – you know, one of your, your best rounds out there was a round you played with Tiger Woods at Riviera when you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Talk to us about that round for a minute. And then was there another round maybe you played, not with Tiger, but with someone else where you went, holy smokes, I am all that and a bag of chips and a large drink? Well, I think the Tiger Woods story is something that'll 
you know, it goes down, you know, probably my top, uh, maybe my top memory as an achievement, you know, I, I, I'll never forget it. It happened. Um, I think it was the Nissan open at the time in LA at Riviera. Um, and I'll never forget cause it was Friday afternoon. I was looking the, at the computer and I noticed that his name was right below mine. <laughs> and my first thought was, God, I hope I missed the cut. Cause if I make the cut, I'm probably going to be playing with him. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I, we did make the cut. We made the cut on the number we played on Saturday. Um, I remember making a, you know, two footer on the last hole to shoot 72. We both shot 72. My first thought was, well, I survived the day. Then my second thought very quickly was, oh my gosh, I've got to play with him again. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, we did play again on Sunday and somehow we both shot 64. And my, my remembrance of the round was walking up the hill at Riviera getting into, you know, where you sign your scorecard. And, and I was asking him to sign my glove and my hat and my shirt and my pin sheet. And he was probably thinking to himself, what is wrong with this guy? We both just shot 64 and went from like 30th to tied for eighth. So anyway, <laughs> that was, that was one of my best achievements on tour. Unfortunately, it wasn't a trophy, but it was, it was a great weekend playing with Tiger Woods. Gotcha. And you fanboyed out in the end and got some great keepsakes for your <laughs> room at home. That's, that 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 is awesome stuff. Let's let's flip the coin right. on, on that. Let's go to a golf course that maybe you know brings back a few less great memories. It's it's a good one for me because my first PJ Tour event was at the TPC Avenel, but it's an event where I remember watching you have the third round lead there and thinking, oh my gosh, my buddy Jay, he might win this week. It didn't quite work out that way on Sunday, and sometimes that. <laughs> and it leads you to understand how to play better under the gun. What's something you took away from that day? That I needed to wear my visor because Titleist got all over me for not wearing a hat that day. It was oh, kind of wow. like Hatgate with the latest Ryder Cup situation. Um, I remember Monday morning after shooting 78 and, you know, getting sick all over myself. Um, I remember the first call I got was from Mac Fritz wondering why I wasn't wearing my Titleist visor that week. Um, anyway, that was a great learning experience. Played with Steve Stricker the last day. He ultimately won the event, and I did not. Um, you know, that was when I was uh, – that's when I believed, you know. And I think, again, there's a very deep lesson there. I actually believed and thought that I could win. And it just got to the point where the stress of the situation, I wasn't able to overcome it with my mechanics. And um, – you know, it, it was a great learning experience, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't learn enough because I never won. But uh, I put myself in that position a lot. I just didn't have the, I didn't have the 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 little things that you needed to do to win a four day PGA Tour event in my game. Gotcha. And you got close with two other playoffs that you're in, the Hunter Mayhan one at Hartford, which I know is close to your heart because that's where you went to college, and then. You had a really good one with Kenny Perry out at the John Deere. So you got in two playoffs. But what's interesting is is your your bio online mentions you had two professional wins. Now, I happen to know there's more. So we're going to sort through that real quick before we go to commercial. <laughs> I know you won at Fort Smith on what was then maybe the Nike Tour? Uh, I think it was Nike at the point at that point, yes. Gotcha. And the Kansas Open, you won when we were both, both yeah. first professionals. But you won the Robinson Open one year. In the final round with me where you shot 65 and left us on the dust. Are there any other ones that no one knows about? Oh uh, yeah. The Arizona senior, uh, the, the Arizona senior open. I won, I won less money. I, I, it actually was more expensive for me to take a tree down in my lot that week than what I made in the, in the purse that week. <laughs> no, that was, that, that was probably the third one, a three or three or four, not, not enough for sure, but, but you know, they can't take, any of those away from me, I guess. I love you. It's, it, golf's a tough game, but it's also tough when your expenses <laughs> exceed your winnings when you finish in first. This has been no Jay doubt. here in the Golf Kingdom. Jay, thanks so much for joining us. We've got to jump to a quick commercial, but stick around because Jay's going to come back for the Fast Five in our bonus segment at the end of the show. You're not going to want to miss that. This has been Jay Williamson in the Golf Kingdom. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> This is not about splitting hairs. 
It's more precise than that. It's knowing to one one thousandth of an inch that every layer of every Chrome Soft is manufactured precisely, which we confirm with proprietary 3D X-ray. Precision technology is not an industry standard, but it is ours. You can hope your ball performs consistently, or you can know it will with precision technology. Chrome Soft, better for the best, better for everyone. Well, we, we seem to have entered the Golf Kingdom matrix here. We have code running. What is all this code that's running? That's what I'm asking my players sometimes is, what code is running in your head and do you have any gaps in your code? There might be gaps in the code here that might affect this entire show. I don't know, I'll have to keep going, but I ask my players certain questions and I get answers back and I go, oh wow, they don't know that. I call it gaps in computer code. So if you look at the code running, you know, if you have a gap in the code, the program won't run correctly, no matter if it's your computer or your phone or your golf game. Let's talk about some gaps in computer code that I seem to always talk to players about. And they're real simple things. I'll give you a simple one. Driver. The driver is on a tee. The ball is off the ground. The ball is already in the air. With the driver, we do not hit down with it. We do not hit the ground ever with it. We sweep the ball off the tee, trying to leave the tee there. We're trying to take the ball cleanly off the tee. If I have a player sometimes that's hitting the ground with driver, I'll ask them, driver, do we ever hit the ground with it? And they'll go, well, I don't know. And I tell them this, gap in code. We never hit the ground with the driver, not on a practice swing, not on a shot. It's a gap in code. Another gap in code is this one. Are divots important? And if they are, how much down do you hit on a golf ball? So once again, gap in code, everybody goes, yeah, divots are important. I got to get a divot to compress it. Well, Tom Watson's won eight or nine major championships and still hasn't taken a divot. He just takes it cleanly off the turf. An angle of attack, I'll say, okay, eight iron. How much do you hit down with an eight iron in degrees? Is it 25, 35, 45? It's, it's zero would be level to the ground. How much down is an eight iron? And I get answers that are like, yeah, you probably hit down 25 degrees. No, you don't. Gap in code. An eight iron, downstrike. It's a few degrees. It's six, seven degrees of downstrike. It can be as little as you want it, depending on how cleanly you want to clip it off the turf. So that's a gap in code. So once again, a couple of things you got to ask yourself is, is there something I don't know? And if there is, ask your coach. Say, coach, I'm not sure about this because it might simply just be a gap in code of things you don't understand. Simple things like trees, don't hit them. It's a gap in code if you're not thinking in the trees, don't hit a tree. If you're in a fairway bunker, don't hit the lip. If you're not thinking don't hit the lip, it's a gap in code. So these things, hopefully here in the golf matrix where the code is running, Hopefully we've helped you fill some gaps in your code. You know, nothing's more fun than getting out of the studio and back in the golf course. So we're back on the putting green. We're going to have some fun working on maybe some weaknesses in your game. And one of the fun things as a coach is I get to see other coaches coach. And I happen to be watching one of my staff coaches work with one of her better junior players. And I heard her dad say this to her as she was hitting little putts like this. He said, no, honey, take your time, take your time. And here's what I watched. She came back and she took her time. She stood here, she waited, she took more time, and then she walked in as she normally would and just whacked out a putt and missed it. So she took more time, yeah? But in that time, you want to occupy that time with the right little things, which is what we had to train into her. So we talked to her about what do you do in that time? So I'm going to take you through what you would do in time and kind of give you some examples of how a tour player thinks and processes because i always say there's a lot of mental work that goes into hitting a good putt and making a putt so once i've gotten my read whether you aim point it like i do i walk up get my aim point read it's about a one and a half so it's one and a half there's my read my aim points right there okay that's good 
or you walk around. Once you've got your reed, I use the line on the ball. I put the line on the ball down. Now I go into the mental work or the time taking part of the putt. I get here and I get in what I call runner position. I'm, look, I'm like this looking at the putt. It's like you're grabbing me and you're holding me back. I'm ready to go. But I want to get in this position to run and I'm looking at it. I'm seeing the ball roll the right speed. I'm feeling myself hit the ball the right speed. I can feel myself take the stroke. Once I've seen it go in the right speed and I've seen where it goes in the hole and where it hits the hole. Now I move in and get really going in the routine. I've seen it, now I walk in and in with the routine. The practice stroke I always say is a question. And the question is, is that the right stroke? And yes, I like that stroke. So now I'm gonna get set, check my aim, I'm gonna visualize it go in the hole, and now I'm gonna to try to repeat that practice stroke and make it go in, oh, a little too soft a speed, but I love the look of that putt. And I did what I wanted to do, and it occupied my time with stuff that's correct to making the putt. So you don't just wanna walk in and, and hit a putt and just kinda of walk in and whack at it. There's some mental work that goes into this, and my tour players all have learned They've got to do the mental work. My junior players, my elite juniors have learned they've got to do the mental work to go in and make a putt. You just can't walk up and hit it. So take your time, but also occupy that time with the correct stuff. And the more you practice it, the quicker you'll get at it. And I bet you make more putts too. Well, we started off the show with poses and I've got my social media pose here for our time to rise segment. Yeah, time to rise. I got a slide I want you to look at. Check this out, because it's always something that helps golf but helps life. Check out what this says. It says, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Interesting thought, because a lot of tour players, they go and take breaks, but they don't stay ready. They have to get ready to come back to playing. If I'm always ready, I never have to get ready. I remember being a player, I always tried to stay ready. I never felt like I wasn't ready going to an event. I was always working at staying ready and working at improving my game. Same thing if you've got a business meeting or a trip coming, whatever, be ready for it. Prepare, make sure when you get there that you're good to go. I always say this about tour players. We like to be surprised but we don't like surprises. We are always staying ready. We are ready for the first round. We're ready for practice rounds. Everything happens in a certain order. We are ready to hit the first tee shot. We're ready to make the last putt. Like I said, surprised is great. Happy birthday, yay, I'm surprised. But surprises, we try to order our day and control it as best we can in what's an out of control, chaotic world sometimes. So I want you to try to function with this thought. You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Try to stay ready. Try to be ready for everything. And then when something crops up, you find it won't be so devastating to your golf game or to life. Well, this is my last best Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media pose you're gonna get for this show, because it's Stranos time. And I'm gonna bring in what I want you to remember right here. That was kind of Vanna White-ish, wasn't it? Let's bring in the Stranos. <laughs> First thing I want you to remember from the putting service announcement is long putts take time. The ball doesn't roll fast, it rolls slow. Allow long putts to take time in your mind. Then I talked about don't break your swing, don't fillet your hands, don't bend your arms too much in the finish. All that happens before you hit the ball for you to do it in your finish. So don't break your golf swing. And then the last thing I talked about was take your time. But when you take your time, you have to fill that time with the right stuff. And I talked about some of the things that you should do in putting to take your time and get it right. Now, thank you for joining me in the Golf Kingdom, but for more of this, for past episodes, go out to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and watch all the shows there. And then if you want more of it, like on your regular TV, you can find us on Roku, all the shows are there too. Thank you again for joining me here in the Golf Kingdom.